Hello, I'm Amy Blaylock. Welcome to City Hall This Week. Durham's Water Management Department is addressing questions that have come up recently regarding the necessity and safety of adding fluoride to the city's drinking water. The city actually began adding fluoride in 1957, and that decision was based on a vote of the city's uh, water customers at the time. Fluoride is being added and has been added for many years as a uh, dental health uh, preventative. It helps promote uh, good dental health and prevent tooth decay. The addition of fluoride is one of the last steps in the water treatment process. It is added after the water has already been filtered and is ready to head out into the distribution system. As with most regulations, the city follows for its water treatment standards. The addition of fluoride is governed by both the Environmental Protection Agency as well as the state's Division of Environment, Health and Natural Resources. They review regulations frequently and we attend at least uh, annual seminars to make sure we stay abreast of all the regulations as well as read up on uh, information in the meantime. The city encourages anyone with questions regarding the safety of adding fluoride to drinking water to speak with their dental health provider. They can help determine whether additional fluoride is appropriate on an individual basis. The Centers for Disease Control have hailed the addition of fluoride to drinking water as one of the top 10 health benefits of the 20th century. So we are continuing to follow that trend. Of course, we stay abreast of everything and should recommendations change, we will certainly communicate with our customers anything on the horizon. For more information, visit Water Management's homepage on the city's website. The City Council is now well into the process of finding a new Ward 3 representative to replace Councilman Mike Woodard. Woodard resigned from the City Council after winning election to the State Senate in November. He will officially leave City Office on December 31st. The deadline for applying to fill the City Council vacancy was November 30th. Finalists will be identified later in December and interviews with those applicants will be scheduled. The City Council will fill the seat no later than January 22nd. Meantime, an important position within the city's administration has been filled. William Bo Ferguson has been named as the new deputy city manager. He will lead the operations team of departments, the ones that deliver traditional governmental services that most directly impact residents on a day-to-day -day basis. Ferguson has 16 years of experience in local government management, most recently as Hendersonville city manager. He will start on January 7th. A familiar face in the city's community development department will stay on as leader of that important city service. Reginald Johnson has been appointed as director of the department after serving as interim director since August of 2011. Before serving in that position, Johnson was city manager Tom Bonfield's senior assistant. More safe places to play are coming to Durham. Find out how a partnership with one of the city's leading businesses will soon have many kids playing in the streets when City Hall This Week continues. loss, it's one of the many ways to fight osteoarthritis pain. For more information on managing pain, go to fightarthritispain.org. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Welcome back. Dozens of Southern High School students now know more about how to get a job, as well as all the services the Durham Teen Center has to offer. 30 students who are beginning the process of entering the workforce visited the Teen Center on November 20th. We actually visited the school a couple of weeks ago and were asked 
um, if they could come and visit the teen center because we did put a lot of emphasis on the teen center and the resources that were available here. Students who attended took part in an exercise on creating a vision for their future, as well as learned how to begin the process of goal writing and goal setting. The students also participated in a series of activities um, relative to independent living. Um, so we did a few exercises and just life skills development. Cassandra Becerra and Kendra Bellamy were two of the students who got to take part in the day's activities. What I would get out of visiting the Durham Center is the opportunity as them telling us you need to get a higher education as far as learning, um, aim for college. I got to learn new things about how to get a job. Students also got a chance to see firsthand all that the Teen Center has to offer. The Teen Center is it's actually a safe haven, but it's also a resource hub of information of programs and um, opportunities that exist for teens throughout the city. So once coming into the Teen Center, you can basically access um, a pool of resources, whether it's school, um, we have a college corner here, um, or if it's an employment, then we provide possible alternatives of um, agencies that are hiring or begin to help you with the employment process if you've never completed a job application before or just never inquired about a job. The Teen Center is open from 2.30 until 7 p.m. Monday through Friday. The City and Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Carolina are joining forces to bring more safe places to play to Durham. In fact, kids will soon be able to have fun while getting physically fit directly in the street. Durham City and County and Blue Cross have been selected to receive a $50,000 grant to create play streets. These are roads close to traffic and open to the community to encourage physical activity, especially in neighborhoods that lack open space. Play streets will be held in different areas of Durham over the coming months. Details about the locations and dates of these events will be posted at the website on your screen. That does it for this edition of City Hall This Week. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And of course, you can find us on demand on DTV8's webpage and on YouTube. I'm Amy Blaylock. Thank you for joining us.